How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. 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 I made it this far. I made it this far. Yes, I did. There were so many times when I came so close. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, death, he tried to take me in. So the reason I'm here is not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. Praise. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. 
Every head is now bowed, every eye is closed, as we now invoke God's presence on this yet another time in worship. For your grace and for your magnificent mercy, God, we indeed give you thanks and praise. For we know, God, that it was your grace and your mercy only that has brought us thus far. It is your grace and your mercy that has kept us. It is your grace and your loving mercy that continues to keep us day by day. And so right now, God, we thank you for this yet another moment in worship that you have provided unto us. And God, we will not take this moment for granted. But God, during this time that you've blessed us, we will use it, God, to worship your holy and righteous name. We will, O oh God, worship you today in spirit and in truth. God, we ask that you would just breathe upon our time together. Help us, God, to transform our homes, to transform, God, our living rooms, to transform even our cars as we may even listen in to places of worship. Because, God, we know that you are everywhere at the same time. And so, Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon us. Spirit of the living God, have thine own way. And we'll be ever so mindful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For this is our prayer today. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen and amen. Well, if you are just glad to be a recipient of God's grace and God's mercy today, you ought to put your blessed hands together right where you are. Come on and put your hands together right where you are. You ought to tell the Lord thank you this morning. You ought to tell the Lord thank you this morning because God has indeed been good to us. God has been better than good to us. Some of us didn't think we were going to make it out of the month of March. And here we now are, the first Sunday in the month of November. And I believe that that is reason for us to tell the Lord thank you this morning. We are so grateful to God for this yet another day that the Lord has blessed us to not only see the start of a brand new day, but another Sunday that the Lord has allowed us to gather in the virtual sanctuary on this, the first Sunday of the month of November. And we are so grateful unto God today for each and every one of your presence. We are especially grateful to God for even our first time and returning guest who now join us today in this virtual place. If you're joining us today for the very first time or if you are a returning guest, we're so grateful that God has placed it upon your heart to come and to worship with us here at the Calvary Baptist Church of Buffalo, New York. We want to know who you are. We want to remain connected with you. We want to uh, continue to even shower you down with expressions of love, just to let you know that here at Calvary, we're not only clearly focused on God's great work, but here at Calvary, we believe in showing and demonstrating the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so right where, we, where you are, we would ask that you would just send us a direct message at this time. Send us your name, your contact information, where you are joining us from, so that a member of our team and myself included will even reach out to you to let you know how grateful we are that you have spent just a moment today worshiping with us. And at this time during our service, we would typically uh, go and we would typically give you a hug, a handshake, a high five. But since we aren't able to do so today, Physically, we want to give you a huge cyber hug 
And we want to let you know that we love you today with the love of Christ. And all of God's people said amen and amen. At this time, it is a time for us to now posture ourselves for prayer. We believe that the prayers of the righteous do availeth much. We believe that when we pray unto the Lord, that the Lord not only hears our prayers, but the Lord listens to us and the Lord continues to speak unto us. The Lord continues to even bless us in ways that we yet not know of. And so at this particular time, we would ask that if you're joining us via Facebook Live, if you're joining us even via YouTube, that you would begin to submit those prayer requests at this time. If you're joining us via our conference call line, we don't want to leave you out today, but we want you to even lift up the name of those concerns that now rest upon your heart. We want to even invite and encourage you to not only use this time to submit prayer requests, uh, but even as your heart so feels led to do so, we would ask that you would contact us and that you would let us know uh, those specific areas to which you desire prayer. It is such a blessing throughout the course of the week when we can receive those prayers and we can intentionally pray with and pray for you. And we're so grateful to God for this opportunity where we can come together collectively and corporately to pray unto the Lord. Today as we come, we indeed pray for our nation. All week long, we have been engaged in prayer during the 6.30 hour, and we're so grateful to God that uh, we have individuals who not only joined during that 6.30 hour, but individuals who continue to make intentional time to pray to the Lord on behalf of our nation. Because we all know that our nation is in desperate need of the Lord's hand, that the nation that we have now find ourselves living in is in need of the Lord intervening on our behalf. And so today as we come, we come interceding on behalf of uh, those individuals whose names now rest upon the various ballots that we will now cast, the ballots that we have even cast. We come praying that the Lord would guide those individuals according to his will. We even pray today that even as there are those who uh, do not exhibit what it means to uh, exhibit the love of Christ, we pray that the Lord today would soften their hearts, that they would not just look out for themselves or just consider themselves in the decision-making process, but that they would remember that as elected officials, they have a responsibility to all. We not only pray for our nation today, but we pray uh, even for those who now reside on the uh, ballots for our local elections that are taking place. We pray that God would continue to keep them, that God would continue to even look after our own communities, our communities of faith, that God would look after those families that yet now find themselves in need of prayer. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed at this time. And I would ask today that you would just take a moment to silently lift up a word of prayer. That you would silently call upon the name of the Lord right where you are. That you would first start off by thanking the Lord for what the Lord has done. And that you would begin to lift up the names of others. For even today as we come, we come praying for the Callahan family. We come praying for the Hatton family. We come praying for the McClendon family, the Young family. We come praying for all of those who make up the family of God. And so right now, oh God, we come humbly before your throne. First and foremost, God, thanking you for just being God. We thank you, God, that in being God, you continue, God, to show us what love is. You continue, God, to provide us with great joy. You continue, God, to provide us with hope. 
You continue, God, to supply us with peace that surpasses all that we can understand. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for the privilege that we have to pray. Thank you, God, for listening and hearing our prayers. And so right now as we come, God, we come not only praying and offering those concerns that weigh heavy upon our lives, but God, we come right now interceding on behalf of our nation. God, we know that you are indeed able to heal the land. But we know that first and foremost, it requires some things from us. That it requires God to seek you first. That it requires God for those who know your name to call upon your name. It requires us to humble ourselves to turn, O oh God, from our wicked ways. To God acknowledge our wrongdoing. To acknowledge our sin. To acknowledge our transgressions. To acknowledge everything that we have done that is contrary to your will. Please, sir, forgive us. Forgive us for all of the moments, God, that we have put other things before you. Forgive us, God, for the moments in which we have chosen not to spend time with you. Forgive us, O oh God, for placing people over you. Forgive us, O oh God, for placing our trust in man, for placing our trust, God, in politicians, for placing our trust, God, in everybody but you. We pray, oh God, that you would forgive us. And as you forgive us, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would look down upon us, that you'd have mercy upon us, God, that you would direct us according to your will. God, we believe today that your word is yet true, that all things do work together for the good. And so, God, even though we may not see it right now, even though we may not be experiencing it right now, God, we believe by faith that you're working things out according to your will. Amen. And so, God, we pray that whatever you're doing right now, that you won't do it without us. We pray, God, that even as we come to you and we ask you, God, to, to help to soften the hearts of others, we pray, God, that you would first start with us. We pray, God, that you would soften our hearts, that we will not look down upon our brothers and sisters, God, but that we would offer helping hands. We pray, oh God, that we will not become so full of ourselves that we will not see others. God, in the name of Jesus, work on us, God. Work in us, God. Help us to love more, God. Help us to see people, God, at their places of need and help them. In the name of Jesus, oh God, right now, from the youngest to the eldest. We just ask, oh God, that you would send down your blessings upon us. God, we pray right now from the east side of Buffalo all the way, God, across this nation, that God, you would continue to hold us in the palm of your hand. Because God, we know if you hold us, God, you, we know you will not let us fall. We know, God, if you hold us, you will not let us stumble, God. And so we pray right now in the name of Jesus, that God, you would just look down upon us. We pray for our nation. God, we pray for our nation today that you would breathe upon us, that you would help us, God, to see the error of our ways. And in the process, God, help us to come to you more diligently knowing, God, that we can't do anything without you. Knowing, God, that you are a God who's yet able to turn things around. So be with us today. Touch every family who yet, God, is trying to figure out what's next. Touch every 
teacher, God. Touch every civil servant, God. God, we even pray that you would touch us here at 1184 Genesee Street, that we would always bear in mind, God, that we have a responsibility beside what's in these walls. Be with us and guide us. For this is our prayer. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said amen, amen, amen and amen. The blood that Jesus shed My doubts and 
Amen. And thank God today for the blood of Jesus. That blood that reaches to the highest mountain. That blood that flows through the lowest valley. And just when I'm feeling weak, it's the blood that gives me strength not just in this moment, not just presently, but it gives me strength from day to day, to day, to day, to day, to day. And here's the good news, it will never, ever lose its power. We thank God for our praise team for leading us in such a marvelous and magnificent way on this Lord's Day. One more time, let us thank and praise God for them, even right where you are. Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. During this very critical season, I'm grateful that the Lord has placed a series on my heart for what I believe will be the remainder of this month, a series entitled Moving Forward. Moving forward as we not only move forward to 2021, but as we prepare to move forward as people for what is to come. And so I would ask that again, you would indulge me over the course of these next several weeks as we engage in this series moving forward. Joshua chapter one. I want to begin reading at verse number one. Hear now the word of God as it is read in your hearing from the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Writ. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. As I promised to Moses, from the wilderness and the Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. Verse 5 says this, no one shall be able to stand against you. Let me say that again. No one shall be able to stand against you. I believe we almost had it. Let me say it one more time. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. The grass withers, the flowers do fade, but the word of our God shall indeed stand forever. For the time that is ours to share during this first installment of the series Moving Forward, I want to talk from the thought simply Worry 
is not an option. Worry is not an option. If there's someone who you're now joining in the virtual sanctuary with, this is a great time to look at them and just tell them worry is not an option. Worry is not an option. If you're by yourself, just tell yourself, this is not the time for me to worry. Worry is not an option. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live for day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb. Every burden's getting lighter. Every cloud is silver lined. There the sun is always shining. There no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow where the mountains touch the sky. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. These words, beloved, lifted from the lyrics of this timeless hymn, I know who holds tomorrow, are words that I believe are fitting for this season. These words are not only fitting for these seasons or for this season, but I believe that these words are yet found in the hearts of many during this particular moment in time. Certainly during this pivotal point in our nation's history. But these words above everything else ought to serve and should provide a great deal of assurance and reassurance for every believer. I say this because these words convey such a powerful and poignant message. And that is that while life contains many uncertainties, you nor I have to live lives that are unsettling. You and I don't have to live lives as people who don't have hope. But instead, as believers, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we should find comfort and great consolation in knowing that the future, though it may seem frightening sometimes, the future, though it may seem unpromising sometimes, the future is still held safely and securely in the hands of Almighty God. I believe that today, my brother. I believe that today, my sister. I stand on that promise. I stand behind it. I will shout it to the mountaintops that I know who holds my future. And I know who holds my hand. But yet within my own humanity, can I just talk for my own self for a moment, in my own humanity, I can honestly say today as a pastor, I can honestly say today as a leader that sometimes worries get the best of me. And I don't believe that I'm by myself today, but I believe that there are some others who can say, Pastor, I stand firmly on the fact that I know who holds my future, but yet the worries that I have sometimes, they just seem to get the best of me. 
Oh, I try to pray. I try to read my Bible and find scriptures uh, to help me get through those moments. But the reality is that now, even more than late, I have uh, been experiencing more worry than I am accustomed to. Come on, can we talk honestly today? Can we talk candidly? Can we keep it real today by admitting that sometimes the worries of this world, they can weigh extremely heavy upon you and I. That sometimes the stress and the strain of life becomes so overwhelming that we feel like what's the point in going on? That with the uneasiness found in the uncertainty around us from day to day, we find ourselves weighed down by immense pressure. A weighted pressure that unfortunately forces many to lose hope. A weighted pressure that unfortunately has caused many to lose focus. A weighted pressure that unfortunately has caused many to lose their drive and their passion and their zeal and their overall excitement for the many possibilities that exist in life. Oh, when we're honest today, many of us can declare that we know what that weighted pressure of worry is because that weighted pressure of worry oftentimes causes us to live our own lives in despair not seeing the brightness of the sun, but only dreary skies and clouds filled with overcast. Oh, the weight of the worry that we experience sometimes forces us to turn to habits that we never thought we would turn to, simply so we could cope and manage with the little emotions that we have left. Oh, the weight of the worry that we oftentimes experience leave us feeling exhausted and extremely fatigued and greatly frustrated. And it, can we go ahead and just address the elephant in the room? Because just the mere thought of Tuesday and what Tuesday will bring has many of us worrying, knowing that we may not even have the results on that night, knowing that there are people who will not respond like Christians once the results are given. And once their candidate does not uh, take office, oh, that worry, my brothers and sisters, that now force us to worry about the fate of our very nation. What does it mean for the future of our young people who can no longer look to someone who's considered one who occupies the highest office in the land? as someone who represents fairness, integrity, or a person of character. We worry about what does this mean for those who have invested time and resources into higher education but still can't find decent employment. We're worrying about what this means for those who already are considered marginalized and disenfranchised. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when we're honest, we're, we're worried, some of us, as it relates to what this will mean uh, to the skilled trade persons who cannot find employment because of their past record. We worry about what this means for small business owners who stepped out on faith but now find themselves worrying about how they're going to just get their heads above water. Oh, we worry, my brothers and sisters, for many about what does this mean for families who can barely make ends meet. We wonder about what does this mean for those who feel like there's no liberty or justice for all, but rather liberty, uh, uh, rather liberty and justice for a select few. As a matter of fact, somebody right now is wondering, why would you even bring this up? Because I don't understand what does any of this have to do with this first chapter of the book of Joshua. This first chapter of the book of Joshua that speaks to Moses' successor who was anointed and appointed by God to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. Well, let me help you today. 
by understanding that when we look at this particular moment in history, it was a period similar to where we are now in that it was a period of transitional leadership. This was a period in which there was transitioning now taking place within the leadership over the people of Israel. And so as a result, I would say it has a lot to do with it because this passage to which we oftentimes hear read or preached at pastoral installation services is one that points to a pivotal point in the life of not only Joshua, but it also points to a pivotal point in the life of the people of Israel. Some of us have heard this passage. Some of us have studied this passage in Sunday school or small groups. But have you ever paused for just a moment to really stop and really consider what the thoughts must have been going through the mind of Joshua? What was Joshua thinking now during this moment that would not only impact his life, but a moment that would impact the lives of the people. What, what was Joshua experiencing as now he found himself under great pressure? As he now found himself grieving the loss of not only Moses the leader, but Moses the mentor. What could he have been experiencing as he thought about what the future held? Can you just imagine the level of anxiety that must have crept upon Joshua as he now was in a position where he was to face the immense enormity of this transitional moment? For it was Joshua... The Ephraimite, the member of the Hebrew tribe of Ephraim and native of the inhabitant northern kingdom of Israel who was now entrusted with the responsibility of leading the people of Israel to their place of promise. He was to lead them after the death of his mentor Moses. Joshua had followed Moses during his lifetime very closely since he was just a young man. He had assisted him during a number of key moments during Moses' tenure. He took time to spend with Moses as well as to observe closely how Moses handled situations. Before he ever became a leader, somebody needs to hear this, he first mastered the art of following. Because you do understand that no great leader can say they are a great leader or be considered or classified a great leader until they first learn how to master the art of following. That you and I can never underestimate the value of serving others, the value of helping leaders who are positioned. That we can never think to ourselves that no matter how great our leaders seem in our eyes, that they do not need our help. But every great leader needs some help. Because it's not all about the leader who takes the helm, it's about those who provide help. Even Jesus himself said that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. One of the greatest honors that we can ever have in life is service. He served faithfully. And as a result of his faithful service, uh, the Lord rewarded his faithfulness by calling him to this assignment. And what I like about Joshua is that as Joshua prepared to take on this new role, Joshua did not just experience the glorious moments in the leader's tenure. He didn't just experience the, the great time during Moses' career, but he experienced the challenging times because no great leader has moments that are void of tension. No great leader has moments that are free from challenging times. He observed the people as they rebelled against Moses at the base of Sinai. He witnessed the jealousy of the elders against not only Moses but other leaders. He witnessed the deep personal struggle uh, that Moses had experienced uh, since the day he led the people uh, out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. He witnessed firsthand the stubbornness of the people in the desert. However, as he received 
receives this call, uh, Joshua, for not one moment, uh, stops and worries, uh, nor does he waver from his responsibility. But now as the children of Israel stood uh, on the mountain bearing witness uh, that they would indeed reach the promised land, uh, Joshua, no longer a young man, uh, but the one who was being used as an instrument of God uh, to save the people, uh, Joshua now stands uh, and Joshua doesn't spend time worrying about the uncertainty of the future. Joshua did not spend time uh, trying to converse with the Lord, uh, asking him, Lord, how did I get here? Joshua didn't spend time uh, worrying about uh, if his leadership was going to match uh, that of Moses. Joshua didn't spend time uh, simply trying to figure out um, if they were going to make it uh, once he was uh, installed. Uh, no, all Joshua did uh, was placed his trust uh, in Almighty God. And can I help somebody on this Sunday morning to understand uh, that you and I cannot allow uh, worry to keep us down uh, even in this season. You and I cannot allow our worry uh, to keep us from reaching uh, the promises that God has for us. Uh, you and I cannot afford uh, to allow ourselves uh, to get tripped up uh, by the trickery that's placed out there. Uh, you and I I cannot allow ourselves uh, to lose faith. We cannot allow uh, this time uh, to worry us to the point uh, where we lose focus. We cannot allow the worry that we have uh, to allow us to become uh, disheartened and disheveled uh, and find ourselves all discombobulated uh, by the disorder all around us. Uh, no, uh, we can't do it, uh, but we must always remember that even during moments of chaos, huh? even during moments of confusion, huh? even during moments of calamity, huh? can I tell you huh? that we still serve huh? an almighty creator? Oh, yes, we do. We still uh, serve uh, an almighty creator. And because uh, we still serve a creator like that, uh, we cannot afford to lose focus uh, to the point where we forget uh, what the Lord has done. Uh, we cannot become so consumed uh, in matters of this world uh, that we forget the God uh, who created and formed uh, and fashioned the world, uh, the one who causes the earth uh, to rotate once uh, every 23 hours, uh, 56 minutes, uh, 4.090536 seconds. Uh, we can't allow this world uh, to allow us to forget the one um, who allows the surface of the earth at the equator uh, to move at a speed uh, of 460 meters per second. Uh, you and I cannot forget uh, the creator, uh, the one who was born, uh, who still has the government. Uh, that's what Isaiah said uh, upon his shoulders uh, have I got a witness uh, the one who is still uh, wonderful uh, the one who is still uh, a counselor the one who is still uh, the mighty God uh, the one who is still uh, the everlasting father the one who is still uh, the prince of peace uh, all I'm simply trying to say uh, is that we cannot allow ourselves uh, to get so tied up uh, in what's happening around us uh, that we forget to to trust the one who has brought us thus far. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Because he's the same God that yet reigns. And I'm so glad that he reigns forever. <laughs> he reigns forever. <laughs> It doesn't matter who's elected because my God reigns forever. Uh, he, he, he reigns forever. And it's within these lines, very briefly, that he lets Joshua know one thing. He, he lets him know one thing today, and I'm, and I'm going to bid you a good day. He, he lets him know that during this time, this future that now awaited him, this future that was now filled with great uncertainty, he let Joshua know that worrying was not an option. And when the future ahead for us is filled with uncertainty, you and I don't have to worry because of one thing, and I'm done. 
we cannot worry because he shows us that we've been purposed to continue. That, that, that's all I have. We, we've been purposed to continue. I, I'm sorry if you tuned or you called in this morning and you were looking for some answer about how we're going to make it outside of this. We've been purposed to continue. That you and I have not been created. We have not been called to crumble during moments of uncertainty. You and I have not been created. We have not been called by God to simply crumble at the sign of chaos. But even in the midst of uncertainty, even when we don't know what the future will hold, we can know that worry is not an option because we've been purposed to continue. Can I show it to you very briefly? And I bid you a good day. It's in verse number two. And again, we'll explore the rest of these verses later on this month. But verse number two simply says this. My servant, this is the Lord speaking unto Joshua. My servant Moses is dead. He says, now proceed. <laughs> you, you didn't miss your cue to shout right there. He says, now my servant is dead. Moses, my servant is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all his people, into the land that I'm giving to them, to the Israelites. Understand, beloved, that for 40 years, they had been wandering in the wilderness. Not only had they been wandering in the wilderness, but God had been so good to them during that time that we even know that their shoes, were not even worn out. That they had a point of reference. Even as they moved forward in a place of uncertainty, they had a point of reference of the power of God. They, they, they had been wandering through the wilderness and those who had started out with Moses, just like Moses, they were no longer around. M many of their kin had died. Many of those who started off with Moses were, were now living amongst the ancestors in glory. They, they didn't get a chance to realize or enjoy the blessing of the promised land. But now it was up to Joshua to not loathe around, but it was time for Joshua to now lead them. And verse number two says that in this time and in this process of leading, the Lord first gives him a simple instruction. He just says, now proceed. Though, though, though many had gone on to be with the Lord, before they reached that place of promise, the Lord, Yahweh, reminded Joshua that the work that they had set out to accomplish it still had to be completed. And the only way this could occur was not for Joshua to simply sit around and talk about how great Moses was. It was not for them to just sit around and talk about the good times that they had. It was time for them not to just sit back and to think about what had happened but now it was time for them to keep moving forward. If not for them, they had to move forward for the ancestors who had gone on. And they had to move on for the generations that were to come. And all I'm simply trying to outline today, my brothers and sisters, during this time that we now find ourselves in, is that you and I ought to never forget that when we choose to keep moving, when we choose to keep marching on ahead, instead of living lives in worry, guess what? It's not just for us, but it's for the ones who marched before us. Oh, oh, it's for the ones who were watered down with watered hoses. It's for the ones who marched in the streets for the right to vote. It's for the ones 
who couldn't sit at counters. It's for the ones who couldn't use particular restrooms. It's for the ones who couldn't drink out of certain fountains. We don't just do it for us. We do it for the ones who came behind us. And as we do it for them, we do it for a generation ahead. A generation that's trying to make sense of all of this themselves. A generation who's never experienced anything like this. A generation whose only concern at this point should be living. We have a responsibility to know that we've been purposed to continue. And that's the reason why we can't worry. I just believe that that's why, or that's what, the Moses of the civil rights era by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. personified. As he delivered that last public speech on April 3rd, 1968, at Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee, when he simply declared, I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Oh, so I, I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man, he says, because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Oh, I tell you, Jesus told Joshua that you need to proceed. Proceed to cross the Jordan. Because you have people who died. People whose lives were given before you could even get to this moment. And because of those lives that were given, you now are in the position that you're in. Oh, my brother, my sister, we must understand that we've been purposed to continue. We can't give up now. We've come too far. Many of us thought in 2008 that we had arrived, but, but we still understand now. We still have a ways to go. But we cannot waste our time worrying. Instead, we must know we've been purposed to continue. Somebody just needs to even hear that as it relates to how you've been living lately. Going through the motions. Going to a job that you know you've not been purposed to be a part of. But you simply have lost your will to fight on and to continue on. You've been purposed to continue. And because you've been purposed to continue, know today, my brother, know today, my sister, that worry that you've been hanging on to, it's not an option. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. God, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, God, for the reminder that you've given unto us that we've been purposed, oh God, to continue. That regardless, God, of what realities yet await us, God, you have created us to live on. And so, God, we pray that your word has permeated the heart of someone who has been allowing their worry to lead them. So that, God, they may know that you, O oh God, are still on the throne. We love you today. We honor you. We thank you. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Just as Joshua understood that his life was filled with purpose to continue because of the lives that had been laid down before him, as believers, we know too that we're purposed to continue because of the life that was laid down for us on a hill called Calvary by that of Jesus Christ, who again did not worry 
about the torture he was going through that did not worry about the pain that he was in, but who continued on because he had you and I on his mind. If you're here today and you haven't connected with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we invite you to today. We invite you to connect with the one who, again, as I've already said, holds tomorrow in his hand. The one who will hold you by your hand. All you have to do is just confess it today. Confess him as Lord and Savior. And we believe today by faith that you will indeed be saved. You may send us a message in our direct messenger. You may even send us an email. Send us a comment, just whatever you do. As you move forward, don't move forward without the master. We pray again that if you've said yes to the Lord today, we believe by faith that you're saved. But we want to continue to walk with you in this process. And all of God's people said amen and amen. At this time, we're going to continue with our time of worship by giving unto the Lord. For the Lord does indeed love a cheerful giver. And I want to personally thank each and every one of you uh, who make up the body of Christ uh, and who make up the membership here at Calvary for your faithful contribution. It is because of you that we are able to continue to provide quality ministry. I also want to invite and encourage every member of Calvary who completed a commitment card uh, at the top of the year to uh, make sure that you go back and you revisit that commitment. A lot has transpired since we completed those commitment cards in January, uh, but certainly we want to know or we want to uh, remember our commitment that we have given. Uh, certainly we know that things have changed, and so as a result, you may not be able to honor that full commitment, but we would ask that you would continue to give your level best. Because as you continue to be a blessing to the ministry, we're able in part to continue to be a blessing unto others. And all of God's people said amen. Again, there are three ways in which you can give. Uh, you can first and foremost give by Givelify, the app Givelify, uh, simply by downloading that app and giving there. If you desire to give via our website, you can do so as well. Or if you desire to come in on Tuesdays, we're going to extend the time Tuesdays from 9 until 5, all right? We're going to give you a little bit more time on Tuesdays from 9 until 5. You can come in on Tuesdays and you can uh, bring forth your tithe and your offering. But we thank you again in advance for how you continue to bless the ministry. Let us now prepare our hearts. Let us now prepare the elements that we have as we now go to the table. Shall we now ask the Lord's blessings as we now prepare to go to the table? For the sacrifice, God, that you made by sending your only begotten Son to die for us, we indeed give you thanks and praise. Thank you, O oh God, for the wonderful privilege we now have to remember the blood that was shed, the body that was bruised. In order, oh God, that we might have life. A life, God, where we don't have to bask in our worries, but a life filled with abundance. We pray now, God, that you would bless our elements, that as we remember, God, the sacrifice made on our behalf, that, God, we would never stop looking to Calvary. For this is our prayer today. In your son Jesus' name, amen and amen. That night in which Jesus shared with his disciples 
in the upper room was a night filled with mixed emotions as he knew that with in that room there was one who would betray him. There was one who would deny him three times. And there were several who would go into hiding. He still went forward and he still shared with them because of the purpose that yet lied ahead of him. And so as he shared with his disciples, we too now shared together. For he took the bread, and after he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it thanks. He said, take, eat, this is my body, which will be given for you. For as often as you eat, you do so in remembrance of me. And they ate together. Likewise, he took the cup that contained the fruit of the vine. And after blessing it, giving it thanks, he said, take, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. For as often as you drink of it, you do so in remembrance of me. And they drank one with another. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, we're so grateful to God for all of your presence today. We're grateful even for this time in which we've been able to go to the table. As a reminder, we want to invite and encourage each and every one of you to continue to join us throughout this week at 6.30 p.m. on our conference call line for our intentional prayer for our nation. Prayer doesn't just stop when we get to Tuesday, but we must continue to pray even after. And so we invite and we encourage you to invite and encourage someone else to be a part. Also, we want to uh, keep before you our Saturday supper. This will serve as the last Saturday supper of 2020. And we want to be a blessing. As we know this year, Thanksgiving, uh, meals will look a little different, but we want to continue to show that here at Calvary, uh, we haven't forgot about you. And so please, sir, please, ma'am, if you have yet to do so, we would ask that you would make sure uh, to register by going online or calling our church office uh, Monday through Friday between 9 and 5 and registering for our Saturday supper. The deadline is next Friday, the 13th, but do not wait until then in order to secure your place. Also, if you've yet to secure your book for our uh, book club, we would ask that you would do so as the deadline is uh, this week. We want to give you enough time to come in and to receive your book so that we can position and posture ourselves uh, for our first installment of our book club, which will take place on the 28th. And then finally, we're very excited about our stewardship and financial literacy summit uh, that is taking place uh, next Saturday, uh, the 14th at noon. You will see uh, the flyer going out real soon if you have not already. Uh, but please, we invite and encourage you to take part in this time in which our very own uh, Letitia officer uh, will lead us in those efforts. You do not want to miss it. Uh, she is certainly one of God's best. And as I've had an opportunity to just sit and to uh, talk with her over the course of the last uh, almost two years, uh, she has certainly been a blessing uh, through her business that she owns. And so we want to be mindful of that. And then certainly we want to make sure that if you haven't done so already, please make sure you go out and vote. Please make sure that you go out and vote. If you need a ride, call the church office. We will make it happen for you. Uh, we will do our very best to assist. But please, sir, please, ma'am, if you haven't done so already, please make sure that your voice is heard. Uh, for as one great organization likes to say, a voteless people is a hopeless people. Amen. And praise God. Finally, all November birthdays, all November birthdays, if you're celebrating a birthday in the month of November, we would ask that you would submit uh, that date so that, again, we can thank and celebrate and praise God for another year of life. 
uh, and we continue to pray nothing but God's richest blessings upon you. And we pray uh, that this next year uh, is a blessed year. Amen and amen. Let us now look to the Lord as we prepare to leave our virtual sanctuary. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, amen and amen.